Hi, Raspbian is a GNU Linux distribution based on Debian maintained by the Raspberry Pi Foundation for Raspberry Pi single board computers. It is also possible to install Raspbian on a personal computer or a Mac. In this short video tutorial, you will learn the exact steps how to bring Clive back in an old PC with Raspbian. I have already done something similar in the past with Asus Netbook and today I'm going to install Raspbian on my old Intel NUC. Intel NUC is a range of small form factor mini personal computers by Intel. This one is from 2014. It has just 2GB of RAM memory and an old Intel Atom CPU. The required hardware to install Raspbian on it and use it is a USB stick, and standard peripherals such as a USB keyboard, a USB mouse and an HDMI monitor. You can apply pretty much the same approach for any old personal computer with Intel or AMD CPU manufactured in the last 10 or 15 years. It is mandatory for the PC to have a drive, for example a hard drive or an SSD on which we're gonna install Raspbian. The whole installation requires 5 steps. Let's get it started. First. In a web browser, load raspberrypi.org. From the top of the web page, click the Downloads tab. You see a long list of images for downloads. The first are for Raspberry Pi. In this case, we don't need them. Scroll down to Raspberry Pi Desktop for PC or Mac. Click on the link and after that, click the button Download ISO. The image that we are downloading is several gigabytes, so depending on the speed of your internet connection, it may take a while. Step number two, prepare a bootable USB stick. Plug a USB stick in your computer. Using a software such as Balena Etcher, select the downloaded ISO file and flash it to the USB stick. Balena Etcher is a free and open source software that runs on Microsoft Windows, Mac OS and GNU Linux distributions. As an open source enthusiast, I'm using it on my laptop with Ubuntu. A link to download Balena Etcher is available in the description of the video. Keep in mind that during the flashing of the downloaded ISO file on the USB stick, all previously existing data on the USB stick will be completely erased. Please wait for a few minutes until the flashing of the USB stick has been completed successfully. Step number three, boot your old PC from the USB stick that we have just prepared. Plug the USB stick in the old computer and turn it on. As soon as the computer starts, enter the boot menu. On Intel NUC, I'm pressing F10 to enter it. On different computer, it might be a different key. Observe the launch screen on the computer to figure out the key. From the menu, select the USB stick as a bootable device. Step number four, proceed to the actual installation. Another menu will appear on the screen. This is the Debian GNU Linux menu. Select graphical installation. The first thing that the graphical installation will ask you to do is to select your keyboard layout. After that comes the most tricky part in each installation. You have to figure out the disk partitions. In my particular use case on this Intel NUC, I have a 240GB Kingston A40 SSD. I will wipe out everything on this SSD and install Raspbian. The end result will be only Raspbian as an operating system on this Intel NUC. After that comes the long installation during which various files from the USB stick are copied to the drive of the personal computer. When this is done, the graphical installer will ask you where to install GRUB. GRUB is a bootloader, in other words, this is a tool that loads the operating system. In my case, I'm going to install GRUB on the same SSD on which I have already installed Raspbian. If you're new to Linux on a desktop, I recommend you to do the same. This is the easiest way to get started and to have only Raspbian on this old computer. Of course, there are various different ways how to do the partitioning of the drive and where to install GRUB. Some people do dual boot with Windows and Linux, for example Raspbian. At one specific moment, the graphical installer will ask you to remove the USB stick to hit continue, to wait for a few minutes more and then your personal computer will reboot and you will enter Raspbian. Step number 5. On the very first boot on Raspbian, you see a welcome screen. 
it will guide you to some final configurations and setup. Follow the guidelines in this graphical wizard to set up your location, preferences for language and keyboard as well as to update the system to the latest version. The update requires internet connectivity. Using an Ethernet cable, I have connected my Intel NUC to my router, therefore I am having a really fast internet connection, however it still takes a while to apply all these updates. When it's done, the Welcome to Raspberry Pi wizard will ask you to reboot the system. Congratulations everybody, we have successfully installed Raspbian for PC on my old Intel NUC. The desktop environment has exactly the same look and feel as for Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi. However, in this case, we are running it on an old PC with Intel Atom CPU. Demo number one, let's open a terminal and have a look at the Linux kernel version. Although on numerous occasions during this video I've mentioned Raspbian, what we actually did was to install Debian with the Raspberry Pi desktop environment on this PC. Therefore, if we check the settings, the distribution is reported as Debian 10. Raspbian is a Debian derivative built for the Raspberry Pi hardware which is with ARM CPU. In our case, on this old PC, we have Intel, therefore we get Debian with the same look and feel as Raspbian for Raspberry Pi. If you have used Raspberry Pi in the past, you'll be very familiar with the user interface. On the top left menu, you can find a web browser, some simple games and so on. In the top of the screen, on the left corner, there is a menu with all installed applications. Raspbian provides all essential applications such as a web browser, a terminal, some applications for taking notes and a few simple games. If you have used Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi before, you feel very familiar. Of course, at any time you may install more software. By the way, the default user is Pi with password Raspberry. During the initial welcome screen, you will be asked to change this password to something else. It's highly recommended to do it. One more thing, and actually it's important. The Raspberry Pi desktop for PC comes with 32-bit user space. This means that some specific software that mandatory requires 64-bit user space may not work properly on this setup. It is a little bit odd mix because as you can see the kernel has been built for x86-64 However, the user space returns just 32. Anyway, for the daily routine work, this probably doesn't make any difference. Thank you for watching. It took me quite a lot of time to make this video and I really hope it is useful. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I have already published a lot of other videos for Raspberry Pi and open source hardware embedded devices. Stay tuned for new videos.